Hello, I'm Thomas. I'm uh, in the Create Editor Extension Group team at GitLab, and I just want to quickly show you how can you make local development of VS Code and our language server work together. As the video is mainly targeted at um, my teammates and other developers who want to make these two projects work together and debug them together. So I created this three, these three merge requests. Uh, one is to the VS Code extension that explains, um, introduces documentation about how to link the projects together and also uh, it changes the node version. Changing the node version is important for NPM link to work. You have to have both node versions the same both in VS Code extension and the language server. We'll get to, the, uh, to that soon. And there is another merge request here that um, that's for the language server. This also bumps up the version to the VS Code version and adds some uh, documentation about how to, how to, yeah, just about the version and bundling. Bundling is also important. I'll explain that. But uh, TLDR is that uh, there are two different execution environments. One and uh, the when you are starting language server from VS Code, you need it to be a bundled JavaScript file with all its dependencies because there is no node modules in our production VS Code extension. And the third merge request is adding some con configuration to make debugging of language server easier but when you are uh, developing it in VS Code. Or you can just, you can use um, Vim like I do, but use VS Code for debugging because it's really a nice experience. So let's have a look how that works together. So I've got this, um, uh, this, uh, language server project and you see that I just merged those two branches together uh, that I was showing because I wanted to both have the bundling that's re required for uh, integration with VS Code and also have the debugging config. So that's what this detached head is. And now I'm just going to run npm link. I'll show you that should be here in the documentation. You just run npm link from within the language server. And then I go here uh, to the VS Code extension and run npm link. It's already here. And now we can validate uh, that it's linked by simply having a look and seeing that the GitLab LSP node module is, uh, is just symlink to the other project. Okay, so that's one thing. Now, we need to start the both projects in VS Code. I already have the VS Code extension opened in VS Code, but there is a little trick when you are opening the language server from VS Code. This is only this trick is only necessary if you want to debug them at the same time. Like you want to attach the language server. Uh, uh, sorry, you want to attach the debugger to already running language server that's been started by the VS Code extension. It's a little bit complex, but it's necessary because we need to map the sources uh, between what the when the debugger attaches to the node process that's running on sources from within the extension, but we want to map them to the sources in the language server project. So how we do that is that we set this environment variable called GitLab workflow path and set it to wherever the VS Code extension project lives. Now we start code. I'll just put it to a different screen. All right, so VS Code extension is started. Uh, language server suggestions are started. Now let's start the extension up, oh, but sorry, one more thing. Um, uh, you need to go to the language server project and run npm run bundle. What this does, it bundles all the disk node a language server into one file called out node uh, main bundle. 
you would see that if we search for main bundle, that's the language server file that we are including. And lastly, um, interesting thing here in the debugging options for language server, we've got, this is the environment variable and you see that then you expect that there is a this desktop assets language server and that's mapping exactly to the folder where we actually start language server from in the VS Code extension. So with this in place, we should be able to just, if there is a, there is a one problem that I didn't solve, our watch task that uh, uh, watches for source changes and recompiles, it doesn't, it runs always once you start the extension once for debugging, but this watch task doesn't copy the latest language server. So before I fix that, I'll kill the watch task and now when I start the debugging it will start new watch task and I don't know why is it let's just make it like this and lastly let's connect the debugger so there is either I had a two task either you can start the server that's where you want to start it separately and then uh, your editor connects to already running language server or your editor started the server and you want to attach to it, which is this case for the VS code. It's this task. Now when I run it, hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm attached. Now here I should see in the language server that debugger is attached. And now let's go to the language server project open a connection uh, open the connection which is the file responsible for uh, handling uh, the language server protocol messages find some interesting one like on completion perfect so here is where we request a completion and now I can here request a completion with control space and here is the breakpoint um, the good thing about this is that it allows relatively about this setup is that it allows relatively quick um, feedback loop where I can just um, I can just make a change. Let's say that I would here make a change call saying console log testing. Now I save it and it's not flawless yet you need to go here and run the npm run bundle bundle and then you you go to the extension you stop the debugging kill this process start it again And now you would see that, let's go to the, put a breakpoint before and after. We started the extension, so I connect to it. Okay, and, or we started language server, I connect to it. I request code suggestion. You can see here that there is nothing in the, in the output yet, then I step over these two lines and you see that there is testing. So it still requires like rebundling and resetting few processes. We can optimize on it, but at least you can see it all working together um, in debuggers. That's all I wanted to show you today. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, it really helps the really helps the channel. See you next time.